back in the shop working on a yard works uh, 10 and a half horsepower 30 incher customer uh, brought it to us said uh, he was having an issue with uh, you know it ran he said he just did a tune up just did the oil uh, we had to drain the gas because uh, we wanted to flip it up and uh, we just took the gas tank off you can see there we removed the gas tank I uh, haven't drained the oil um, because on this model it doesn't have a dipstick it just has the uh, you know the little the little cap there you can see that he's uh, our customers went and put an aftermarket light on using the uh, pre-existing uh, lighting wires you know a little bit better of a light but um, yeah his problem was that his starter every now and then it uh, it, it wouldn't engage and we noticed that uh, well you can see it for yourself it's missing missing a bolt there missing a bolt down there as well that's not good folks you don't want that so we're gonna go ahead and get the right bolts um, those bolts fall out I'm not sure why they don't put like a blue Loctite on from the factory every snowblower that I've ever worked on I think we've had to put starter bolts in um, you know two bolts fall out maybe one or two fall out the others start to get loose um, and then what happens is it ends up working its way back this way and uh, that's when you get slippage problems um, so that when the starter pops out to engage the gear on the flywheel uh, you know the teeth on the flywheel uh, you get that whoo and it doesn't engage um, they need to be adjusted and uh, like I said you know if you're putting bolts into that you always want to check those bolts whenever you're doing a service or uh, you know just regular maintenance on your machine but uh, if you can put some blue Loctite not red uh, red is for like when you never want to get something out but uh, a blue Loctite works good at uh, just keeping those in there filled his tires with some air 14 psi they had uh, they, they were both flat lost all the air um, just a little easier to push around that way his main issue was that uh, you know it would run but he said that it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't drive all the belts look to be in good condition they have the right uh, amount of tension on them uh, you don't want really more than a quarter quarter inch of play depending on the model and we'll go ahead and look at the uh, friction wheel underneath we'll flip it up pull the bottom access panel and uh, have a look at, at the friction wheel because uh, that's what I believe is the issue and uh, these bolts right here they're 3 8 and there's just four of them and that's it you just want to make sure that you when you put your plate back in you pop it in at the bottom and then you gotta bend both of these pieces up here underneath this top lip now if you want to save the life of your uh, your snowblower you know you can see there's a little bit of rust where he uh, our customer might have you know bumped into something right there so I just went and scraped a little bit of that off and uh, spray some uh, rust oleum rust check. It's basically just an undercoating, you know, rust preventer. And uh, you get yourself a cheap little brush. Spray it all down here, anywhere where there's seams. And basically, you wanna you wanna uh, take your rust oleum, spray it all down along here. You can see wherever there's rust. And like I said, get yourself a cheap brush and just wipe it all along here. You can see where somebody sprayed this with some silver, uh, some silver spray paint, that wasn't us. Somebody did that just to uh, stop the rust. It prevents uh, your, your machine from rusting, and uh, who knows, it might even keep it alive for uh, five, maybe five more years. Okay, so we're looking at a slipping friction wheel. You can see the friction wheel here looks to be in good condition. But you can see there's clearly signs of wear. So what happens is when you move the drive, even with the handle up there engaged, uh, what's happening is uh, it's it's just slipping. On the newer models, they have these little threaded rods here, and you know this cable goes all the way down to your wheel right under here and that lifts this up and applies pressure to your friction wheel just like that now you can see that I just got a little quick clamp there so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tighten this up and we're gonna bring it to a boat just until I can feel it start to get a little bit of resistance onto it and we're gonna go ahead and 
tighten up this lock nut. Now I'm just doing it finger tight for now. Now what you want to do is go ahead and get your quick clamp. If you're working by yourself, clamp that and then we'll go back down and check to see if it's slipping. Okay, so as we can see, now when I try to rotate the wheels, it doesn't want to rotate. And that's because the friction wheel is applying pressure to this plate. Now, second thing we want to do, see all of this stuff here? A little bit of rubber, a little bit of grease. You don't want any of that. So I'm going to show you what to use to wipe this down. Okay, so what we're using here is some silicone and wax remover. This is a Refinisher Select uh, Automotive Refinish Products. Uh, we get it in a gallon and basically you put uh, this on a little bit of um, paper towel and or a shop towel. Go ahead and get all of this off. Make sure there's no grease. Make sure there's no anything that's going to get onto this. You want this and your friction wheel to be absolutely clean. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take some white lithium grease and put it onto these gears here. You don't want to use um, like uh, a poly grease, like a red and tacky, because uh, what happens is, you know, as you move it, it starts to get stringy. And uh, I've put poly on gears before, and as they spin around and come in contact with other gears, you see these long, like stringy bits of grease that start coming off, and they'll get onto your friction wheel. So we like to use a white lithium. Uh, it sticks to the gears and it doesn't come off when uh, when you turn it. You're going to want to go ahead and grease this shaft as well. You can use some white lithium. Just taking my finger across it, you can see that uh, you know there's a little bit, but not much on there. And uh, that's what changes your speed, right? Because uh, the outside of this wheel spins faster than the inside of that wheel. So. You know, you put this thing into sixth gear, it's way out here. You put it into, um, you know, first gear, it's over here. And you put it into reverse, and it's right about there, right? Because it's spinning the opposite way now. So that's basically the, uh, you know, the ins and outs of how a snowblower works. You know, you got your pulley on your engine, and that ends up coming down to this pulley here, which spins this disc. And, uh, you know, by pushing that, that lever up on the handle, all that does is it lifts this and puts contact from this to there. And uh, now's a good time. We'll also go ahead and uh, check to make sure his shear pins are uh, the proper, which they uh, appear to be the proper ones. I can just see because it's got the cotter pin. Sometimes those break and people end up putting bolts into them, just regular old bolts. You don't wanna do that because you can end up uh, wrecking your uh, your machine. You can see there's a little chunk of ice in there. I'm not gonna put my hand in there. You know, they, they have these, uh, these little shovel pick tools for a reason. Uh, so we use just a little hockey stick, a uh, little cut off, you know, piece of wood to, to get in there because, uh, you know, if there's any tension on that, uh, you know, your hand could get caught in there and uh, you don't want to get hurt. But now is a good time to check for grease nipples and uh, you're going to want to grease your auger uh, and make sure that um, on some models, you'll have a little uh, bolt here. Um, you want to fill that up with gear oil uh, normally, I think it's like 90 weight gear oil, but uh, you know now is the time to do it, and uh, we'll go ahead and get that done. Well, boys, we got this all uh, done. We went fired it up, and it ran like shit. Uh, the guy said he did a tune-up, but obviously uh, no good. So uh, you know, I just went in, cleaned the carb quickly, and uh, like you can see, like it's just it was filthy. So I'm gonna clean up these parts. Uh, this is uh, the carb that doesn't have adjustment. You can see it's got the fixed air fuel ratio jet and the fixed main. So there's nothing really you can do uh, other than just give it a good cleaning. So we got her all cleaned up and a uh, little bit of water in there that I'll hit out with the compressor. And uh, we'll get this thing back together and uh, get it fired up and return it to the customer. Quick way to see if your primer bulb works uh, before putting it back on. Stick your thumb over it press your primer bulb you should feel a little bit of pressure when you push it in sometimes these are uh, uh, a suck sometimes they're like a pull uh, where they you know pull fuel through uh, most of the times on these Tecumseh snowblowers they're a push so when you push that in it just forces air through here um, so this one works and uh, we'll go ahead attach it and I got the car back on linkage hooked up and uh, we should be ready to fire it up pretty soon
Well, boys, we ended up uh, finishing that yard work snowblower. The customer ended up coming and picking it up before I had a chance to uh, to film it, you know, running and driving and uh, blowing snow and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it ran good after I did that carb clean. Uh, the first time I took it out, it barely started and it ran like shit. So um, once I did the carb clean, it ran fine. And it was just a case of uh, adjusting the, uh, the, the cable there for the... Um, <clears throat> the friction wheel uh, plate pressure there and uh, once we got that done you know it worked perfect uh, but anyways that's you know basically the ins and outs of uh, how a snowblower works so if you uh, enjoyed the video leave a like uh, comment subscribe and uh, you know keep tuning in for more weekly videos um, that's it guys thanks for watching